Hello, and welcome back to the Knitting Traditions podcast. My name is Inga, and this is my little corner on the internet where I talk about my knitting. For those who are new here, I hope you like a little bit of knitty content. I have a lot of things going on. I have a lot of finished objects to show you, webs, some acquisitions, some plans for fall winter because I live on the west coast of Norway so fall kind of just glides right into winter and lasts until April <laughs> so they kind of fit together the kind of wardrobe that I will be making. I also have some outfits that I've put together for the end of my pregnancy which is a combination of dresses and my knitwear that I thought I could have at the end to kind of just show you because I thought they turned out pretty nice. That is one of the good things about a knitted wardrobe is that it fits a lot of body types, I find. They're less um, restricting than store-bought clothes often. So that's what I did this morning. I went through my closet and get rid of all the clothes that are already getting kind of tight. Um, I'm 24 weeks pregnant now. And that counts from the first day of my last period. That's how we do it in Norway. I know it's different around the world. And so I got rid of all those clothes because they'll just fill up my closet and annoy me. And now I kind of, hopefully what is left in the closet will fit. <laughs> and yeah, just put some outfits together to just make it a little bit easy in the morning to put something on that feels comfortable and also makes me look cute because who doesn't? need that so yeah for those that's interested i'll have that at the end um probably before the acquisitions because there's some people who just don't like seeing acquisitions so totally understandable um what else can i say i got home from my holiday so that is where my acquisitions are mostly from uh and i've been working i have day off today which feels really nice because my body was really happy on vacation and then it from every day at work I kind of got more and more um, unwell so it's nice to have a day off resting up a bit and uh, getting a few things done while I still feel good enough to do them and I have a new coffee cup that I got in Turkey which is where I was with my cousin it's a handmade ceramic mugs. I love collecting ceramic mugs to uh, Matisse's frustration. Um, I can't help it. I just love it. They look really nice and they make me feel very cozy when I drink my hot beverages. So, snuggle up and uh, we can maybe start with what I am wearing. First off, to address those out there who worry, I did color my hair, or just the blonde portion. I did some brown stripes. Pregnancy safe, don't worry. But I thought it looked nice, more my natural hair color, since probably won't have the time in the next year to go to the hairdresser for my appointments for blonde hair at least, which takes hours. Uh, so yes, that's new. And this you've seen before. I tried looking through my Instagram for some information, but I saw that I didn't post about this. I probably post on Instagram 120th of what I make. I don't know, I'm not really good <laughs> with social media. Also, Ravelry I don't use, haven't used it for two years. It's just too time consuming in my day of today life. I was wondering if maybe I wrote it down because that's what I've been doing this year. I've been writing things down and I'm going to continue to do that because, I don't know, it's easy and it helps me remember information for future uh, reference if I want to make something in because this is something that I designed myself and I was hoping I did it this year but I might... I might have finished it last year. It's a top-down raglan 
that I knit with Drops Alaska. And let me see, going right into some other projects that I made on the Olympic sweater. So I don't think I made it this year. This is a project from from last year. Everything is kind of getting a bit tangled in my brains. But yes, uh, I believe what I did was knit the neckline first, which kind of looks like a mock neck to me. And I gotta say, I don't hate it. I might just need more mock neck sweaters in my life. It stands up, it, it's very flexible. I have tacked down, so probably I knitted as a turtleneck first and then didn't like how it looked, so I tacked it down. So it's a mock neck. And then I did the raglan, and then it looks like, um, sorry, right after the raglan, I started doing stripes. And I have done four stripes on the sleeves and one, two, three, four stripes on the body. And then I did a very long cuff for the arms, but after blocking, they grew quite a bit. So I have also um, tacked the sleeves down on the inside. So just whip stitching around with a darning needle. And I really like how it looks. It's very cozy. I do like a wide sleeve. And when my arms are at my side, it hits about here. And if, but if I'm working with something, it rides up a little bit, so it's very functional. And on the bottom, I did a split hem, which is longer in the back than in the front. Uh, it's quite a heavy sweater because Drops Alaska is a heavier weight yarn um, and I do think it's a worsted spun mm. and yeah I used two colors and I got the yarn very cheap so it was a very affordable sweater and I really like it so I might just make more in the future. I don't remember if I used some other pattern as a reference or not. I will have to go back and look. My memory worries me sometimes. But yeah, I really like the sweater. Haven't worn it in a long time. I kind of picked it out of my closet today as I was putting away also some knit sweaters that are more form fitting just because I want them to stretch over the tummy and whatever is more loose fitting. I kept easy to grab out and also put some on my dresses so that is what i'm wearing also apologies if the quality isn't the best when it comes to the video it is so gloomy and dark out and it's probably gonna stay like this for a very long time i do my best with like a lighting ring and however i can sit close to a window um I could record in my, in another room where there's more like white surfaces, but it's just not the cozy vibe of my knitting room. So we'll see. I might do that in some other episodes if the weather is really dark. Okay. I am chatty today. I hope you're okay. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Um, I have some finished objects to show. All of which are smaller things and then I have some bigger things as whips at least one a lot bigger thing so first thing which has been away for a long time is this garter shawl blanket scarf thingy that I have made in Manos del Uruguay which is a lace weight. I think it's Marina is the base and the color is Vesuvio, I think. Now I had two balls of this in my stash from, from way, way back. 
Um, according to my notes, I cast on 360 stitches or 50, 350. And I've just been knitting garter back and forth. So just knit, 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 knit on 3.25 millimeter needles. But I've been slipping the last two edge stitches with the yarn in front and then just knit them on the next beginning of row to create an eye cord edging on two sides. I had two balls, ideally to make it as wide and long like a square, I probably would have needed at least one more, if not two. And I did have a look to see if I could get it in Norway, but no, I would have to buy it from the UK or some other country abroad, which would be very expensive. With shipping, the yarn cost, taxes and everything. And honestly, with the inflation going on right now and um, salary drop changing and just, you know, needing to buy things for the baby, I just couldn't justify it. Um, we're in saving mode. So I just stretched it like a bad boy when blocking it. Uh, <laughs> I just pulled really hard on it. It's a superwash yarn, so it does grow quite a bit. And um, so if this is, you can't even see how wide it is. It's, it's my wingspan. I can hold it from tip to tip. And when I blocked it and stretched it out, I can almost hold it from my wingspan. It kind of ends there. So, I mean, I could stretch it to my wingspan, but so it's almost a square. It is, if I fold it double, not the short way, but the the longer direction, I think this is going to be a great blanket for a baby, my baby, to have in her strolly or bed or wherever, maybe just to snuggle with. And maybe in the future, if... Um, it holds up well. I think it's going to peel quite a bit. If it holds up well, though, I might unpick the cast off and then knit an equal length with um, a white um, monosilver by Marina base that I have. I have two skeins of that and it make it like a half and half triangles wrap. So maybe in the future. It's also wide enough to fit a regular bed. So if I kept making it longer, it could be like a cover on a bed. But um, I don't know if I'm willing to... I mean, this took me a really, really, really long time. And I don't know if I am wanting to do that to myself. I think I will choose a thicker yarn or bigger needle for project like this in the future so make it a little bit less um attentive of a knit because I did have to look at it all the time in order to catch the stitch not slip because it was so very thin so usually I can knit without looking because I have the muscle memory and I feel how the yarn is moving in my hands even though I'm not looking but because this was so thin and slippery and the needles also thin it was harder to kind of get a feel of it, so I did have to look a lot when knitting, and it's a lot of stitches, so yeah. I need to look back at this if I'm considering it in the future and be like, is it really worth it? I don't know. I don't know. But yes, this is a finished object. The color is really nice. Um, for something that's not on my body. I'm not a huge fan of this much going on on a garment, which I will get back to for talking about another finished object and whip and why I've chosen the item that I've chosen for that yarn. So yes, one. Another one. Let's see, maybe do it in the right order, Inga. Sorry. So I brought some smaller objects with me on vacation. I don't 
don't think I showed this one because I think I finished this just before I left after recording. But in the last episode, I showed you some patterns and um, this was one of the patterns. It's the Barely Bonnet by Pure Stitches. Now this is the big Barely Bonnet. Um, I have knit the regular Barely Bonnet, which is um, light fingering weight. But essentially, you know, this is the pattern and Pure Stitches is the designer. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, both the sizes. So before I left, I, I knit a little Barely Bonnet. I don't think I showed this to you. And it has the little cute ears that are sewn together and sewn on afterwards. And it has the the ribbing around the face and then you tie underneath. Um, it's a very simple pattern, not really a lot of fuzz, but there is quite a bit of purling um, for the ribbing, of course, it's knit and purl stitches. And then once you join in the round, you know, the pattern continues in garter. So you'll have to knit and purl every second round to stay in the garter pattern. Um, but it's such a quick knit. I knit this in a day. And also the things that you make to tie, you can really do whatever you want. I just... Had a bit of a cough. I just um, cut a lot of several strands, like at least probably nine strands of yarn, six strands of yarn. And um, then I just take my darning needle and pull them through the edge stitch. And then I braid them like you would braid your hair with three strands. I just hold them with two strands double or triple strands. And I do that until they're equal length, then I tie a knot at the end so it doesn't unravel. And then I just trim the ends so it's the same length. So no eye cord needed, no fuzz, simple. Um, having to knit the ears, four pieces flat, sew them together and sew them onto the hat is really the biggest fuzz part of the whole thing. And I think when I knit this, I think I was supposed to make the newborn size, like one month old, but I think I was looking at the wrong stitch count. So this ended up being the one to three months old. And uh, I used the yarn that I had for my lacy round blanket that I showed in the last episode or episode before that either way so this is the same yarn it's gonna be so cute have the little hat and the blanket and the strolly outside and because I knit the wrong size I wanted to also have one for the newborn size so this is some leftover yarn that I have because it really doesn't use a lot of yarn this pattern this is the Stellina base from Cami Jo Knits I was gifted this from her last year for a test knit, or it was in January maybe that I did the test knit. And I I made an adult size hat and I had this much left plus a tiny little nugget. And I got a um, newborn size baby hat out of it. And again, I just braided the ends. I decided not to do the ears because I couldn't be bothered. I think it's really cute without the ears as well. Very functional and yeah, just couldn't be bothered with making the ears. So now I have two of those barely bonnets in two different sizes. This is definitely a lot softer than this one, um, but I do think it's going to soften up a bit with, um, with washing. Now, I know a lot of people prefer superwash yarns for their kids. Um, it, I mean, it's going to depend on the kid if, if they're very sensitive or allergic to certain fibers or not. But children in Norway and babies have been using 
untreated wool for generations. It is really cold and wet here. And when you superwash treat a yarn, covering it with microplastics, it loses the properties that I would want for my child. The non-superwash is warmer, it breathes better, it has better insulating capabilities, so it's not too hot, not too cold, um, and less chemicals. Of course, you know, if something is dyed, they might have some chemicals, but the more natural, the better, in my opinion. And there are, of course, lots of different animal fibers out there. Some are very soft, some are more prickly. They all have very different feels and staple lengths and um, micron counts and all of that plays, plays a role. So it's not just like wool is wool. There's lots of different things out there. So we're going to play around and see what works. But uh, there will be some superwash things for practicality and because I have it in my stash, but I'm leaning more towards the non-superwash. And also to say a lot of people will go for superwash because they can machine wash it. I machine wash all my wool, all my non-superwash wool. I machine wash it on a wool program that machine has and I use wool soap. For very big heavy garments, I usually soak them in the no rinse stuff and leave it flat to dry. I will probably put all the baby's knits into the machine because it'll be a better way of cleaning it if it gets dirty. While my clothing don't usually get a lot of like stains on them and non superwash wool is self-cleansing. Um, but of course, if the kid gets a lot of food on it that stains it, it will need to be washed. And I'll wash it in the machine. So, yeah, little uh, tangent there. <laughs> After finishing those two, I had this other pattern that I showed last time. Which is um, a free pattern from Drops. It's the Chili Day Balaclava, and it uses one skein of Drops Air, which is 150 meters for 50 grams. Uh, when we were in Turkey, I bought this one yarn at a store that I was thinking of making a toy with. I got three of this white one, and I want to make, uh, is it the Benji Bear? Um, it's a crochet toy, but I was also a bit worrying about crocheting because I'm, I'm not really a crocheter, um, with this kind of yarn, which is impossible to read your work because it is so furry that you can't really see and read your work, basically. So I decided, um, I had two skeins in a different color to make the balaclava. So I cast on, and I think I cast on for the, this one-year-old size, but it looked huge. So <laughs> I knew how many stitches I had cast on. Um, I couldn't really read gauge because where are the stitches? You tell me. But I knew how many stitches I'd cast on, so I measured the entire length and then did some math to figure out how many stitches would be the width it was supposed to have um or or gauge and then did some calculations and i reduced the stitch count drastically to make it have the one year old size um but i must have done something i think the the neck portion or shoulder portion is good but i must have done something wrong in this section because it looks tiny, it looks, and it measures a lot smaller than the one year size should be. It's probably the head size is closer to one to three months. Um, so this is hopefully gonna fit the baby when it's small. I don't know, but it's very um, 
cozy. I think it will be soft and nice. So I cast out another one. I found some yarn in Turkey, which is very similar to Drops Air. It's by Gazal, which is a Turkish brand that I've used before. Not this base, but it's all blowing out. I'm sorry. But the, the brand is Gazal. And this is Alpaca Air. Not Drops Air, but Alpaca Air from Gazal. And it's 150 meters for 50 grams. So it's the exact same length. The composition is very similar, like some blown fibers into a chain looking like structure. This is a merino baby alpaca and polyamide blend. The majority is baby alpaca, that's 58%, and then there's 14% merino and 28% polyamide. So I think it's more polyamide in this than the drops air. But it's, it was what I had access to, and the colors were really nice. Now, I got two in this color, and then I got two in the lighter color. And I used the lighter color to to make the 12 to 18 month size um, balaclava. So, as you can see, the head is quite a bit bigger in the recommended gauge. Because this one I could do a gauge swatch for and see. And yeah, it's very soft, it's very stretchy as well. So I think it's gonna fit um, the head, even if it's bigger and growing, which is nice. I used less than a skein for this. Um, and the other ball that I have, I gave to my cousin because she also bought some of in this color to make a sweater for herself. So, uh, she was worried that she was might run out. She doesn't like playing yarn chicken. So I gave her the other one and the scrap from this one. So she has a bit more. So that was two finished balaclavas. I was on a roll. But I really brought very little with me. I finished the blanket and then I finished those two um, barely bonnets. And then I got the yarn to do this and this down there. Uh, so this yarn, which I think I forgot to say is the Himalaya Koala brand base. Himalaya Koala. It's 100 meters per 100 grams. I got two cakes in this color. So what I had left after um, doing this, which is, you know, quite a bit of a size, I decided to just knit. Um, I started in the corner with three stitches and then I increased um, at the beginning or at the end. Doesn't matter. It was either at the beginning or at the end um, with two stitches to go. Uh, and so on each row there was one increase uh, and I kept going until I ran out of yarn which was uh, approximately well it will be the half triangle of this so yeah I ran out of yarn somewhere here and I joined the new ball because I had two balls right and then I decreased in the same manner so I think when I had so either I knit two stitches and then knit two together and then knit to the end of the row or um, I knit until I had four stitches left and then knit two together, knit two. Doesn't matter if you do it at the beginning or the end, but it's one increase on each row and then one decrease on each row until I had three stitches left and that created a square, a garter square in this very snuggly fur-like fabric which definitely can be machine washed because this is not natural. Fibrous is not fur, right? And then, you know, because I had already made this with the first skein, I had quite a bit of yarn left. So at the center, I picked up eight stitches and then I did some, I don't know, increases. I don't remember uh, how fast I did the increases but I tried to create a circle so I did rapid increases 
not for that many words because this was i think on needles 5.5 quite thick needles so i didn't have to do a lot of rounds or increases before it looked quite wide so i just stretched it out and saw that okay i don't want the head to be bigger than this and then i knit maybe five rounds or something before starting the decreases in the same manner that i did the increases and then i just um like you would do with a rounded toe or something pull the yarn through the remaining eight stitches maybe i think so and i knit two ears i just cast on i don't know eight stitches maybe and then knit until a certain point and then start decreasing in one on each row to make it more pointy did the same here and sewed it onto the head and then I still had quite a bit of yarn left so instead of putting stuffing into this head I just used the, the scrap yarn that I have and shoved it into the head and voila you know completely made out of this yarn no scraps left over and then I found some black cotton yarn when I got home to embroider on a nose and some eyes and I am terrible at that I don't I think I spent a lot of time trying <laughs> to get it to look nice and one of the eyes was a lot bigger than the other one and it was very asymmetrical so I had like a tiny bit of this yarn left after weaving in the ends and I just put it over the top here and sewed it into the head to to cover that black area because I was not going to do that again but I think it looks really nice it's very cozy so it's like a snuggle blanket bunny thing I don't know if the baby doesn't like it I will have it I think it's very cute I also made a mistake I think when <laughs> when starting this that resulted in there being like a hole and I could have just taken the end that I had and covered that hole but I thought it was nice I can hang this on the wall or something um just to you know get it off the floor if that is ever needed I don't know it doesn't matter but I thought it was really cute so yeah I made a little snuggly bunny thingy so that was one and the last finished object that i have is my fall feeling i um love hot water bottles like i really like them <laughs> and i think Last year I made three, four, five. I made five hot water bottle covers. I've kept two here, one at the cabin, and I gifted two. They make really nice gifts. And I want more. And I also want to maybe try and make some for gifts, maybe. Because for people who would like a hot water bottle cover, I think this is really a nice gift. And it's a quick knit. I knit this in 24 hours on maybe 4 millimeter, no, 3.5 millimeter needles, I think. This is some very autumnal looking yarn. I had a mini skein and then a 100 gram skein. And I didn't use a pattern for this. There are lots of patterns out there. Um, but I prefer patterns where I can knit with whatever I have to fit whichever water bottle I have because there's lots of different shapes and sizes out there. So what I do is I take the yarn and a needle that would fit the yarn and then I cast on with, um, is it Jenny's Magic Cast On? It's a cast on where the the cast on just looks like knit fabric it's invisible and then i usually do that until i think it's big enough and i will stretch it on my needles um 
to make it see like approximately how wide it is. And I like it to be slightly shorter than the width of my water bottle. So I'll hold it up to the water bottle. And then I'll start knitting, doing increases on every round on four points. So one, two, three, four points, like a toe up sock. So sometimes you do that on every second row, but for this, I do the increases on every row. And there's lots of way to do increases. Just do whatever works for you. For this one, I did Elizabeth Zimmerman's Make One, but I found that it looked really nice on, on one side, but then on the other one, it was a bit gapy. So my preferred method, which I've done on a different one, is make one right, make one left. It's a little bit snug uh, because you do increases on every row, but there's no holes gaping. It works for me. So that's what I did. And then I tried on my water bottle to see is it wide enough. And my preference is I'd rather be the cover, the cover be too tight than too loose because I want the heat to come through the fabric. So I don't want a very thick fabric. So if it stretches out a bit, kind of separating the stitches a little bit, that is even better. More heat's coming through. So no big signs there. I just try it on and see, okay, it fits now. I can drag it on. Good to go. And then I did some little bit of color work down here, some three by three, and then some three one for three rows and one, three, two rows or something like that and then I just knit and stockinette I measured when this was on the bottle how long the section was and when I was the same length away from the bottleneck I stopped with the main color and I did the same color work just reverse and then I did the same decreases except instead of you know instead of you're making one I was knitting two together and slip slip knitting on each side. So there are two stitches between those decreases on each side. Then when I had the same amount of stitches as the cast on, which for this project for me was 30 on each needle, I use magic loop. I was at the bottle neck. I mean, I tried it on. I was at the bottle neck, um, but the bottleneck is more snug than the width that I have down here. So I decreased on one row every second. So I knit one, knit two together, and knit one, knit two together. And that resulted in 20 plus 20 stitches, which is 40 in total for this project. And I knit a two, two by two rib until I ran out of the, of the mini. And this is, as you see, longer than the neck of the bottle. It's not long enough to fold it double, which is what I usually like. If you run out earlier, you can also just have it to the edge of the, the bottle. But if it's like this, that it's longer, but not long enough to fold it on the outside, I just stuff it in on the inside after I've put water in here, because that way there's no, um, plastic edges that might irritate because I don't just have this at my feet. I like to also hug it in the winter in bed because it is really cold here. <laughs> and uh, usually I'm a very cold person, freezing all the time. Pregnancy has made me a bit more warm blooded, but definitely will need something like this in the winter still. So yeah, started with 60, so 30-30. And I think for this one, I increased until I had 48 and 48 stitches on the two needles. And for my preference, I mean, this fits nicely. It's not snug. It could be even more snug to have that stretch stitch that I like for the heat to go through. So I cast on another one, which will transition us right into the whips. Eh. 
So I cast on another one. Now I ran out of the mini, so I only have the main colored skein. And I think this colorway is autumn. This screams autumn to me. I cast on the same amount, 30 and 30, on each side. And I did make one right and make one left for this one. And as you can see in the bottom, there are no holes to be seen on either side. But for this one, I have eight stitches less than the other one. This is going to go in the same kind of water bottle that I have. So I have 44 plus 44 stitches on each side. So it's a bit more snug and I think it's going to be the perfect fit for the water bottle for what I want. And I might gift the other one to someone because it's nice with color work. And this is more simple, but I do really like the color. Now, I don't wear typically clothing with this much going on. Um, and this is supposed to be a sock yarn. It's, um, let's see, it's 350 meters per 100 grams. So the same thickness as phenol, but this is not phenol. This is 80% wool and 20% polyester. And um, if you have ordered autumnal, I can't really say, it might be a spoiler if people haven't gotten it this yet, but they should have gotten it, yes. They should have, if not, I am so sorry. But this yarn is an autumnal, it's a it's a sock yarn with a mini from Fjord Fibers, which is a Norwegian dyer based in Bergen. And this is their troll. What's it? Eh, it's a troll base or a troll fjord base. Mm, does it say? Hmm. Actually, yeah, it's tr it's their troll fjord sock base. Um, and this is the fallen leaves, and it, that is exactly what it looks like to me. It looks like fallen leaves. And I was really torn between what I was going to cast on for this project. I was thinking socks, because it's supposed to be a sock yarn. I love woolen socks, but I have a lot of socks, and... I just thought this was so autumnal that I want to, it, it, it's a color that makes me very happy. So it would be a shame if it spent most of its time in my sock box, because I have a box of knitted socks in the hallway. I wanted it to be more seen, so that's why I went for the water bottle cover, because that's something I see almost daily. Even in the summer, I have them in like a basket so in my bedroom, so I see them. And yeah, it just makes me really happy. I was toying with the idea of a hat as well, but I think it might have been so busy with all everything going on that it's not something I would have worn, even though I might have enjoyed making it. So I started this last night. This is maybe an hour and a half of knitting. It goes by really fast. 3.5 millimeter needles again. And yeah, we'll see how much I have left after this water bottle, if I can whip out another one, if I use another mini skein, we'll see. But that is one whip. Ay ay ay, I have more whips. So <clears throat> another thing that I brought with me on holiday was um, my forever whip the garter square blanket that I am knitting on in uh, Rauma Finul. I'm using 375, 3.75 millimeter needles for this with my Lick needles, which I love. And I bought this, a green and a rust color on holiday with me. And I knit quite a few squares out of it. And after I got home, I took those squares as well as 
more squares from from my lingering whip that I kind of just um, took out to see um, what would make a good size for a baby blanket. And this is what I chose. Very um, autumnal, fall-like colors. And I've taken out five in each color and it should be um, a decent sized blanket. It's going to be very warm because, you know, it's uh, not super washable wool. It softens quite nicely with washing, so none of these have been blocked. And I thought it was also a nice way to, um, I want to, to practice before doing like the king size bed version. Of course, I will need to knit a lot more squares since I'm taking this bunch out. Uh, but I have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors, five squares of seven colors, which is quite a bit. And I think what I want to do is crochet a border in a light color around each of these and then join them all together. And I have several links saved, some that I found and some that you have sent in the past of how to do it. And I think I might just play around and see what result I like best. And then maybe in the future I'll just build around it to increase the size of the blanket or have two separate ones, a big one and a small one. We'll see. But I do really like the colors. A lot of the funeral colors are heathered, like this one. The, I think all of the ones that I chose for this version are the heathered ones. In the big one, I also have some more solid colors. This is the color I brought as well to Cherokee. I have another gray. I would like it to be a mix of autumnal colors and more neutrals. I also brought this color with me, which is the rust, which I love. This color I had that I just showed as well. And then this one, which is like a mustardy yellow green. Yeah, I think they're going to be really nice. Uh, it's a bit of a threshold for me to start crocheting a border and connecting them because it's a commitment. <laughs> Daily squares are really easy. It's just 30 stitches, 30 garter bumps, bind off. And it works really well. But figuring out which technique to use to join them and crochet the border and which color to go for, those are all decisions that need to be made. But um, I'll get around to it. I promise. Then I did a few episodes ago I was showing this project which is a dainty daisy granny square blanket pattern and I have made a lot of colored flowers in cotton yarn that um, has a white square border and I started joining them and then I saw that I think I had met, made 11 of each color except for the dark pink. The dark pink I had only made I think this is the back side this is the front side. Um, I think I'd only made six of them so for now this has six long Long ones, they're only joined <laughs> horizontal, no, they're joined that direction, not this direction. Um, so I wanted to make more of the dark pink, but I didn't have the yarn here. It was at my parents' house in Turkey. So when I was there, I whipped out or crocheted up, I think, 10 more dark pink ones, just in case I want to... Uh, make the blanket even bigger and I also skeined up a little mini ball of it that I took home because all the other colors I have here um, yeah so I have made the flowers but I do need to make the white square border around them and then I can start joining it to the blanket weaving in the ends <laughs> 
which really isn't that big of a deal. It, I think I have like two ends per square. <laughs> uh, with the way that I'm doing them now, there's only the one white end at the end of the square. So it's not that bad. But I'm not really feeling like crocheting with cotton yarns right now. I want to be knitting all the wools, all the warm, chunky knits. Um, I've whipped out some baby stuff now, so now I feel good about that. And now I want to focus on big things for me. <laughs> because yes, selfish knitting, I support. But this is a summer blanket. I'm going to be having a winter baby, so... This does not need to be made before the baby gets here. I'm telling myself. So I don't believe in forcing things. I I make what makes me happy. And I think that's also what makes me productive because I enjoy the process. And if I'm not enjoying what I'm doing, it just takes me a lot longer time. So I'm not going to force anything. This looks nice and cute in its basket. And I'll get to it when I feel like getting to it so there's that and speaking of what I feel like doing I have a new cast on for me and I need a zip oh, it's getting warm I'm getting warm from talking to you I'm excited all right I have been wanting more cardigans because I have a lot of sweaters. I don't have a lot of knitted cardigans, but I do gravitate towards them in my wardrobe, especially now. Um, cardigans is something that I want more of because I can layer it and with the belly and also later when breastfeeding, it just seems great. So there is one cardigan which has been on my dream knit list so this whole year i'm running the dream knit cal if there's something that you've been dreaming about making make it post a photo on instagram with the dream knit cal and i'll have some prizes at the end of the year which will be shipped out by the end of the year unless something happens um but there will be prizes i have some already and one of the things that's on my list is the miles shirt jacket by ozetta I have several patterns by Ozetta kind of queued up that I want to make, but I haven't made anything by her yet. This pattern I've had, and the yarn I've had in my stash that I want to use, which is the Unspun yarn from Hillesvog, I have quite a bit of it. And I decided that I wanted to make the cardigan in the light gray, so I have white, light gray, medium gray, dark gray from Hillesvog. This is a double stranded unspun, um, similar to the Manchalope, which I have not tried yet, whilst the Newtidin and the Plotilope are single stranded. This pattern I think calls for Manchalope, double stranded, so this was perfect. I did a gauge swatch and I have knit with this before and it's very soft, it's very warm, it's very lightweight and it pills a lot. So what I found with knitting with Unspun before is that adding a strand of silk mohair doesn't affect the gauge that much but it adds durability both when knitting so it doesn't rip as easily sorry and also with wearing I feel like it it makes it uh, a little bit more sturdy and by when you knit the strands kind of wrap around each other so having that silk component in a silk mohair wrap around the unspun I feel like it helps keep the fibers a bit more so it's less pilly that's what I found it's still gonna pill I don't mind but yeah, I wanted to add some silk mohair. So I looked through my stash. And I had, if I can find one with a ball band. Ish. 
I had some silk mohair in my stash. This is the tin silk mohair from Sun is Garn, which is a regular silk mohair compared to other types. It's 212 meters per 25 grams. This is the color 1022. And I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five balls of this. And honestly, I don't know if it's gonna be enough or if I'll run out. So I before casting on, I made sure that I could get this yarn and colorway still. And I can. So if I run out, I'll just buy one more. Even if it's a different dye lot, I don't think it's going to affect the project that much because it's two strands of the unspun, which is quite a lot of bulk. And this is just a tiny component of it. So I don't think it's going to be very visible. And in this pattern, your gauge swatch is the pocket. So I knit the pocket on the recommended needle size and I got gauge, maybe like half half a stitch that like my sweater is going to be just or cardigan is going to be slightly slightly wider not a lot half a stitch um so i decided to to continue with it my row gauge is off so i have if i knit if they say to knit 10 rows mine is a lot longer than the measurements in the pattern so i'm trying to working around that a little bit but also i want my cardigan to be a lot longer i saw someone else's podcast oh who was it i'm sorry i saw somebody who made the miles shirt jacket and they said that it would looked a quite it looked quite a lot shorter on them than in the sample photo in the sample photo it looks really oversized and long like it's down on your thighs and that's what I want. I want the jacket feeling, like the oversized jacket feeling. I am 20 centimeters or more taller than the model in the sample photo. That is 8 inches. I'm like 8 or 9 inches taller. So if I want it to fit like that on her, I need mine to be at least 8 or 9 inches longer in the body. So, yes. So for for the body push, portion, I don't think the whole row gauge really matters that much because I'll be making it longer either way. I also made the pockets slightly longer because I want big pockets to hold my stuff. Um, that's also a good reason for the silk mohair because it'll help with holding things that is not just going to stretch a lot which the unspun might because it's such a soft um, and lightweight material so I made the pockets and I started on the back and front and this is where the row gauge kind of matters a bit more I think because it gives you not centimeters but how many rows to do things because there are increases and in such involved um and <laughs> you're gonna i'm assuming i haven't read through the pattern yet but i'm assuming you'll be picking up stitches for the arm and yes so because i know because first it was like do this many rows while you're doing this stuff and then just knit in stockinette until this many centimeters but that made a disproportion between the section where I was doing things and just the pure stockinette portion. So the pure stockinette portion was a lot shorter than in the sample because I had already gotten a lot more centimeters in my whip. So I think I'm making, or I know I'm making the large size, but I'm doing the length in the front and back section to the measurements of the extra large size to kind of combat that a little bit and add like a bit more material in the stockinette. And hopefully that'll work out for my cardigan jacket. So I've finished the back and one of the fronts 
I've picked up stitches and I'm doing the other front. And then I think after that, I will be knitting back and forth for, for the body. And I'm assuming the pockets are attached in the end. And I'm just going to be making the body a lot longer so that it fits on me the way it does in the sample photo. That's the goal, at least. Um, so yeah, really happy with um, how this is turning out. I think it's going to be a great jacket. And it's just one of several cardigans that I want to make this fall. This one, I had the pattern and the yarn ready and I knew exactly what I wanted. But I also have some yarn that I would want to be a cardigan, but I haven't landed on a design just yet. There's also some cabled sweaters that I'm really feeling like casting on, but if I'm honest with myself, is it what I need? No. Do I want it? Yes. So we shall see. But cardigans, I definitely want to make more of, so I just need to land on something that will give me pure joy to knit on and to wear. And my criteria that I have is pockets. I just need more pockets in my life. Soon my hands will not be free, so I will need somewhere to put my phone that I always have on me. That's just how it is. Um, and with now wearing more dresses because my pants don't fit, I need something with pockets and that's gonna be the cardigan, I think. So the Miles shirt jacket has big pockets and I want a cabled cardigan with pockets. And I have several in mind, just haven't quite decided. I could also probably figure out how to add pockets to a pattern that doesn't have them. But if it takes too much brain power to do so, I'm gonna be honest with myself, probably not gonna do it. Because I like to be in the lazy knitter as well. I like to freestyle because that way I don't have to figure things out. I just, I don't know, make it up as I go. But if I have to like alter things, that requires a little bit more thinking. So that brings me to acquisitions. But before showing the acquisitions, since not everyone likes them, I thought I could go through some sweaters and cardigans that I do have that I have put over little outfits. And I'll insert a photo of the entirety. <laughs> so this is a like floor length dress, very roomy cotton. Um, it doesn't have sleeves, so it's great for the summer, but I need to be wearing this in the winter. So I have taken my ranunculus that I have knit in British wool four ply. And it's from Woolly Knit. And this particular color I bought myself. They also sent me some, some yarn last year, but this, I think, could it be the almond? Hmm. I followed the ranunculus pattern, but on a thinner needle, I think four millimeters or maybe 4.5. I have talked about it in a podcast last year. If you want to go through the archives and see if you can find it, I would have to spend just as much time as you to find it because I don't keep track but this year I keep track so I'll I'll know for the future for whatever I made this year so I've paired the ranunculus and it's kind of making me want to make more ranunculuses like this because it's so lightweight and it's so thin but it gives warmth and it's a great layering piece over dresses so there might be more in the future don't know if I'll be wearing um uh, belt under my bust or not to create a waist because this is very straight down um, but I have it on here if I decide to to do so so that is one where am I gonna put all of this another one that I have is the minimalist cable 
cardigan. Don't remember the designer, but she's on Ravelry. That's where I found this pattern. The minimalist cable cardigan, and I knit this with two strands of a yak blended yarn. It was a chain yarn, and I'm having it over a black muslin dress, which is gonna fit both in pregnancy and breastfeeding, hopefully, after. And this cardigan is very comfortable, but it doesn't have pockets, and I wish it had pockets. <laughs> it's also very drapey. Um, it's knit in pieces, and I think ideally I'd prefer not knitting things in pieces, just because finishing is like another threshold thing for me, so. But it's a beautiful pattern and a beautiful yarn, and I used some coconut buttons for it. Another criteria for cardigans for me is that ideally they're not going to slide off the shoulders. I have shoulders that have a tendency, tendency for things to slide off, and this kind of slides off a little bit, so. But I don't really know what it is about cardigans that fit better and not, so it would be a shame to make like a beautiful cabled cardigan with pockets and then not wanting to wear it because it keeps falling off. So I don't know how I'm gonna go about that, but if, if you have recommendations, please feel free to share. If you have a link to the pattern, even better, so people can click it and quickly see what pattern it is, including moi. <laughs> but yes, that is one outfit. I also have my No Frills cardigan by Petite Knit. One of the first things that I knit of like indie patterns in my knitting career. Uh, I've been knitting all my life, but I learned to knit from patterns when I was in medical school. That's not how I learned to knit from my grandma. She, she taught me like techniques and stuff and then, you know, just freestyle things, but Knitting from patterns is a whole nother skill that I learned later on. And this is one of the first patterns um, that I made. And I used, I think it was Isayer Spinny together with a Rowan Kid Silk Haze. And it's a beautiful color. I love using this for layering because it's such a great neutral. And this one has pockets, which is great but they're not very big. So ideally I would want bigger pockets than this to just fit stuff better. Another minus with this cardigan is that it really slides off my shoulders. Like it's nobody's business, but I am pairing it with a white t-shirt and some very mom friendly, um, is it overalls? I don't know, but this one has pockets as well. So, for this one, it doesn't have to be a cardigan with great pockets, because this outfit has pockets. It's the only one here, I think. But yeah, it's a shame that it keeps riding off the shoulders, so I definitely don't want more cardigans riding off the shoulders. I want them to stay put. And then, this is my animalistic dress, my leopard dress. And I have this cardigan over it, which I should have done my research. What is the name of this? I will put it here. Um, this is a combination of monostrola, which is the fluffy, fluffy yarn used, which is a, um, I think it's not mohair, it's alpaca that creates the fluff. And there's some gold stellina in it. And then the other yarn that I used is Holst Super Soft. This might be almond. Maybe. Um, for this one, I have three coconut buttons and this one ties at the waist. Now, I don't, this cardigan hasn't been used that much. 
just because I feel that when I tie it at the waist, it looks a bit awkward with a lot of outfits, but I do think that with a dress like this, it's gonna be nice. Um, and over the tummy as well, and breastfeeding friendly. The fluff, we'll have to see how, how friendly that is, but for now at least, it's an outfit. And this is my tulip jumper, my Melody Hoffman, which I knit in the Hillsvog, unspun, held double-stranded. But for the tulip here, it's a bit crinkly as you can see, because uh, it was folded in the cabinet. I didn't use a silk mohair for this one, so this one does pill quite a bit, but it's so lightweight and warm. It's a great layering piece and I use it a lot. And for this one, it's over a very smooth like silk dress, which is a great beach dress. It's way too, too revealing for the winter. Um, great for breastfeeding though. So yeah, this together though, I think it's gonna be a really, really, really nice outfit and have some wool stockings underneath. That's how I'm gonna get through the winter. <laughs> Wool stockings, wool tops, and then just a dress to cover my bottoms. And this one is a sort of, what do you call it? It's like a gingham something dress, very loose fitting. And it has a, this is the back. It has a bow that you tie at the neck. And I have my Amy slipover over this and this is the first Amy slipover that I made and I made it with one strand of the Hillesvog in the darkest color it's the charcoal uh, and I used one strand of a silk mohair in a similar charcoal to create this and I think it's one of my favorite things that I've ever made it's a great piece for layering and adding to an outfit and I don't know just the fit and the color of it is very chic to me and I love how it looks over dresses as well and because it ties at the end it's going to be great for a growing belly and I wish I had more and I have one more so I had to make an outfit with that one as well this one I made this year and this one I made with new titan some leftovers new to them that I had um, and yeah it's one strand of new to them and then I think I used one strand of Isayer that I had left over as well and I ran out so one of the bands here I think it's this one it's a slightly different color because I used a silk mohair from drops that I also had in my stash because I didn't want to Buy more yarn. I wanted to use up my stash and I did. And I don't think it's visible unless I point it out to someone. So this Amy slipover from Sunnyscarn is covering another muslin dress in like a terracotta. I think it's very fresh looking and I love it. Last outfit that I've been wearing for the last two days, so it has food stains because that is my life now, um, is this dress that I made two years ago. Um, I called this the Far dress. I made this using a free knitting app, which is no longer in use, which is a shame. So you can't, you can't make this um, unless I were to write it up someday but also I don't know if that is legal since I used an app but it's also no longer available I don't know it's a really simple raglan it's a top-down raglan and then it has a braid stitch instead of ribbing at the bottom which I think is really nice and I named it the fall sweater after my grandfather who passed away and I used Rauma Finer. I think I have it on a cone and it doesn't say what it is but to me it's more reminiscent of their fino than any other bases that I know about from 
from them. And again, I have it over this muslin dress with some food on it. And this one is like a knee knee length dress and it's also short sleeved. So combining it with a wool sweater makes it appropriate for fall winter and um, some wool pantyhose, not stockings, pantyhose, wool pantyhose underneath and we're good to go. Hey, <laughs> it's a long one. Sorry, not sorry. Most people seem to like it. I guess people who don't won't be here anymore. So that is like my little styled outfits. This is also one that I'm wearing with a pair of jeans with like a pregnancy belly thingy going on. But honestly, I don't like these kind of pants. Eating here. <laughs> They just kind of don't stay up, but you know, it's roomy in the tummy, but then there's nothing like holding it on the waist. I don't like it. I'd rather wear dresses. It's more comfortable, at least right now. Um, but yes, that does take us into acquisition. So like I touched earlier on, kind of on a little budget for, for the next year. Um, Thank you so much to anyone who has helped me out on Ko-Fi. This next section is uh, thanks to you guys. So I was in Turkey where fiber is a lot more affordable. And I had like a little money in my Ko-Fi account that was very generously donated. So thank you so much. And um, I was able to, to get some yarns, which always makes me really happy. I... I just love fiber. So the first thing that I saw when I was there uh, was this yarn. So I just finished my um, my Manusel Uruguay blanket in like a super lacy weight. And then I saw this yarn, which is the Turkish brand again, the Gazal. Gazal Outlet is what it's called. This is 100% superwash merino fine wool. Now, like I touched, I prefer non superwash, but this was really soft and I think it was going to make a great blanket for a baby, either for mine or as for, or as for a gift. And um, the price was really nice. It feels super silky and I just really like the colors. Not something as as like an outfit for me, but for a garter blanket, I think this would be absolutely stunning. So that is what is the plan for this. Uh, it's quite a thick yarn, so there's not a lot of meters to to a skein. Uh, does it even say on here? No, it doesn't even say how many meters. It's on this yarn. Isn't that strange? That a that a bow bent doesn't have that information. It just says Gazelle Outlet hand painted, hundred percent superwash merino fine. But yeah, I figured if <laughs> if I got this, it should be enough for a blanket. And what I could do is to created the same way that I made the little bunny snuggle thingy that I start in the corner and increase until I've used up almost half. I do want a little bit of a safety margin and then decrease until I run out and then hopefully have enough of a safety margin to not lose yarn chicken. So yeah, oops. That is the plan. So we will see. As you can see, I also don't believe in gender assigning colors. I just think it's beautiful and it's going to be really nice and soft. So that is one acquisitions acquisition. Most of the fiber that I came across and come across when I'm in Turkey are superwash acrylic cottons. 
that's like a, most of the fibers that you come across but in the store where yeah, I found that um the lady in the store she she recognizes me because I always go to her store she has some nice interchangeable needles and I know that she has in between all the other fibers some natural fibers as well so if you ever go to Alanya Turkey that is Samanyolo Yun and she showed me in the back she had this yarn and this is 100% alpaca undyed um, this is also made in Turkey from Gazal. It's Gazal Baby Alpaca Pure Colors. It's not 100% alpaca. It's 55% baby alpaca and 45% merino wool, non soup wash. And this is 320 meters to 100 grams. And I have five skeins of this, which I'm hoping is enough for a sweater for me. I don't think it's going to be enough for a cardigan um, just because I prefer longer cardigans and this would look really nice with cables. I think I need a white cabled sweater. I love my Billy pullover, pullover that I made last year in green and I think it would look really nice in white but this is not the right yarn weight for that one though so might need to look for another pattern. Yeah. Sport Light DK. Is that what this is? Oh well. It's beautifully soft. It is so nice and soft. And um, need to find the perfect thing. But I think something cabled or textured at least. That is what I'm feeling this season. Cables, textures, snuggly. So, again, drop a link below if you have the perfect pattern in mind. So that is that. And I also got two tiny little skeins to make something if I feel generous for a baby. Because uh, again, this is very thin yarn, but I want to hold it double. So I was thinking of making more of like the beer league bonnet in different sizes. Um, but I would have to cake it up and then I would hold it double. Because I think this, this is also gazal. This is silk and merino. 20% silk and 80% merino. And this is superwash merino. It's 400 meters to 50 grams. So that is 800 meters to 100 grams. So... It's the same thickness as the Manos del Uruguay yarn that I used. And, um, you know, I'm not going to do that to myself again. So I'll be holding it double to make it fingering weight. And I was thinking of doing the Barely Bonnet, but I also think they look really nice together. So maybe a garment? Mm -hmm. Maybe. We'll have a think. We'll have a think. Yes. And then I went to another yarn store <laughs> by accident. We were just parking the car because we, we rented a car because I, I haven't been feeling the best. So we flew down during daytime to make it smooth. And then we had a car waiting at the airport, 20 minutes to the house. And then we had the car until we went to the airport again. So it was very nice and relaxing. But as we were parking the car one evening to go for dinner, uh, we saw that we parked right next to a yarn store that I haven't been to before. And as any kind of crazy yarn lady, I have to go into a yarn store if I see one. It was closing in five minutes. <laughs> so I was, the lady was packing things and I was like, can I have those five minutes, please? And she, <laughs> she very generously um, let us. But that also caused like a little bit of um, shopaholic frenzy. Like I kind of felt like I don't have time to look at everything and just enjoy it. Like I need to just find a souvenir, like crazy person. 
like I am. <laughs> and then I saw that she had some blue faced Lester. That's how you pronounce it. Blue faced Lester wool in our store that I've never seen in Turkey before. Like I've never seen breed specific wool there. I've seen wool and alpaca and silk, cashmere, but most of things are synthetics. But she had some blue faced Lester from Etrofil, which is designed in Italy. Uh, but I do believe it's made in Turkey. It's 100% wool from Blue Faced Leicester. This is the color burnt orange and it's 240 meters to 100 grams. So what weight is that? I honestly just know lace fingering. <laughs> um, I have one that's, she also had a different base which was Falkland worsted. And that one is 200 meters to 100 grams. So if this is worsted, would that make this a DK at 240? Or is it a light worsted? I don't know. But this one is thinner than this one. And I have a sweater's quantity of this and a cardigan quantity of this. And it was quite affordable, so I mean, I couldn't, I could not. Um, they were autumnal and they were breed specific wools and I just I wanted to make these into something beautiful so I always love the rust and the orange I think it's a great color I think it looks really nice and again it would make something really nice with cables it would also work really well with a white color to make some color work so we'll see. But this is the Blue Face Lester. This one is Falkland Worsted Mulesing Free from Etrophil. And this one was a 200 meters. This is the color Cabernet. 4.5 to 5.5 millimeter needles. Now I have eight of this, which is 1,600 meters, which I hope and think should be enough for a cabled cardigan with pockets, because that is what I want this to be. And I think I don't have a lot of things in my wardrobe in like this kind of burgundy color, but I do have a store-bought sweater from years and years ago. And I really like wearing it, the way the color, the fit, I don't know. I really like it. So I would really like to make a cardigan in this color. And I think I would wear it a lot. I don't know. Yeah. This is very autumnal to me as well. For me, autumn is mostly rust, greens nature colors the way it looks outside i'm not a purple fan but i can go with a burgundy if i see something purple i'm like no that's not my autumn that's not how i look at fall but this one yeah this one this one can go in there i'll allow burgundy i like burgundy so yes need to find the perfect one and if i do find it that might just be my next cast on the Miles Church jacket is really flying off the needles and I do have my cumulus dress but I haven't made any progress since the last time I showed you guys and I don't know that one is more of a summer thing and with a growing tummy probably not gonna wear that until next summer so that might just be a lingering whip and then I'll work on the Miles Church jacket Maybe some hot water, hot water bottle covers to have some gifts for Christmas using stash yarn. I think that's going to be a good financial decision. And then a burgundy cabled pocket cardigan. And maybe, maybe a white cabled textured or textured sweater. 
that is like the most imminent thing that I kind of feel like I want to knit but like always I'm not gonna make a decision and stick to it I will knit whatever makes me happy and I hope that you do the same because that's what we're doing here and on that note I hope that you are well this was a long one I hope to see you in not too long hopefully and I hope that the lighting was good enough to at least see a little bit and uh, I think I have some footage at the end that I'll add for you to enjoy if you like that kind of stuff and until next time happy knitting